Hello and welcome to the ADS tutorial series. In this tutorial video, we will talk about a new capability in ADS starting from 2020 release and that capability is called Queue Manager. Queue Manager makes the job of a designer who wish to run large number of simulations um, and don't want to sit in front of PC to launch each and every simulation himself or herself. So in this queue manager, we could line up all the required simulations which we need to perform. And these benches, uh, simulation benches, could be from various workspaces, not necessarily only from a single workspace. As you can see here in my demo, I have four workspaces um, sorry, three workspaces, uh, four benches from one workspace, two from the second and two from the third workspace. So once we line this up, we could go ahead and start a simulation, which basically will invoke a sequence of operation where Queue Manager will open the respective design schematic. It will run simulation, uh, create the data as well as the data display will be populated with the results of our simulation. Now, each of these simulations could be a very time consuming job. And if a designer wants to use a full productivity and be more time efficient, he could line up all these simulations once and then start the queue. So no matter whether the queue takes four hours or eight hours of time to run through all the test cases, a designer can continue to do um, you know, other job in this meantime while ADS is working out to work on this. So while this looks exciting, so let's see how can we set this up in ADS and it doesn't require any special license. Whatever ADS license you have, this just simply works upon. The only thing you need to make sure you are using ADS 2020 or a subsequent release to that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and configure Queue Manager so that we can go ahead and use it for our work. To enable Queue Manager, you can go to Tools menu, go to App Manager, and scrolling down at the bottom, you will find a utility called Queue Manager. Select it to enable and click Close. Now if everything is okay, you will notice a Queue Manager menu here. In case it doesn't come up for you, go ahead and restart ADS and you will have this menu posted here. So once we go to Queue Manager, we can open the Queue Manager window. This is where we need to add our test benches. And if you notice in my current workspace, I have few test benches which I would like to add. So here we can go ahead and start opening up the schematics of everything which we want to add in our Queue Manager. And once you open the schematic, you can notice there is a plus and a minus sign this palette gets activated once we activate the queue manager in the main ADS. To add this schematic to the queue manager, you just simply click on this plus my you know, icon. However, uh, we can go ahead and keep selecting the other uh, designs uh, which we need to add in queue. So right now from the first workspace, I have added four you know, schematics for simulation. Now we can go to any other workspace. Uh, for example, I will open up this MIPI workspace. And here I do have a couple of schematics which I would like to simulate. So similar to what we did earlier, we'll go ahead and open the schematic and we will keep adding. And now I have one more workspace which I would like to use in my queue manager. So I'll go ahead and open those as well and add a couple of schematics from there. So we'll go ahead and now I have pretty similar um, you know, view which I showed you earlier. So I have four designs from one workspace, two design from second workspace and another two from the third workspace. Once you have these design in the queue manager, you can go ahead and even modify the queue um, to put our uh, design earlier than, than the some of the other ones which you already have. For example, in this case, I have a FET IV, you know, curve tracing simulation, which I would like to post as the first one. So I can go ahead, select that and click on this up arrow to bring it up higher in the list. So I will go from FET IV simulation to S parameter simulation. 
And again, here I can see I have HP two tone and one tone. I will go ahead and reverse the order. So I would like to do HP one tone first, and then um, you know followed by the two tone. Similarly, in MIPI workspace, I have pre and post. I would like to put pre before the post. And here I have one low pass filter and another band pass filter schematic. Right, so once we have the queue, uh, when you click on the respective item, it shows you the workspace path, shows you the library name and the cell name and the view which you are simulating. And if you have, uh, for some reason, uh, multiple views in the same cell, for example, your view could be an ideal uh, schematic design followed up by um, you know, vendor component based design, followed up by revision two of the design, all of those views you can go ahead and add in this queue manager so that all, all those views can be swept as well. And then finally you can compare the results. So in order to launch simulation, we could go ahead and use the simulation control buttons. The first button to start simulation. Uh, second is the pause button. We can pause the queue at any point of time. We can stop the queue, all the simulations in the queue. We can only select a particular design from here and we can only simulate one out of many test cases which we want to run. Or we could, uh, if a particular simulation is taking too much of time and we want to see the rest of the results, we could go ahead and stop the, the ongoing simulation and skip to the next test bench. So this setup is quite flexible and it allows users to play with it. So let's go ahead and start the simulation queue and we will revert to this video once our simulation are finished to see how the how the data can be seen. So at this point, um, you know, simulations ADS is invoking various, you know, schematics as uh, in the order defined in our queue and performing the simulation. Uh, later, I will also show you what can happen if a particular test bench has an error uh, while running simulation. And that will be very clearly highlighted in this queue manager. And we can open this schematic to have a look uh, what's wrong and we can even correct it. And we can either restart the whole queue for simulation or run only that particular test bench for with the, with the correction uh, done by us. Okay, now notice on the top left side here while ADS is scrolling through, you might notice the workspace is automatically changed by queue manager. It opens the relevant workspace, it opens the relevant um, you know, design and, and then saves the, the results. If a particular uh, you know, test bench has optimization like you saw in my case, it will even run optimization. Uh, whatever best result it obtains, it will go ahead and update your schematic. It will save the schematic so that you don't need to even do all those things manually. So here I have all the test benches, uh, all the eight test benches which are simulated and it's, they have completed successfully. Now, once all the simulation is done, you can pick any of the bench and using the icon here, you can either open that relevant you know, schematic uh, from here, or you could go ahead and look at the data display. And this data display corresponds to the latest simulation uh, which we just ran. Now, in case while we are in the queue manager and we, uh, let's say, select a particular um, you know, uh, schematic from some other workspace, Notice what happens here at the top. So currently we are in the workspace called Queue Manager Demo. And if we move to MIPI, and if we try to look at the data in that particular data display of MIPI workspace, notice here ADS automatically changes the workspace and it opens a new workspace for you to have a look. Now, let me show you what happens in case there is a deliberate uh, or if there is an error in any particular simulation. So here I'm going to deliberately make that error happen. I will go to the same queue manager demo and I know there is a test bench here, uh, which is not intended for simulation. And this is only a subcell or a sub circuit. So this particular design is just used as a subcell into the test bench. But by mistake, let's say if I add this particular schematic also, for simulation and let me put it a little on the top so that we don't need to wait for the entire queue to be finished. And let's say if we restart the queue simulation, so the first simulation will go successful 
as we know, it's the correct simulation setup. But look what happens when it reaches to the, to the design which has an error. And here it clearly highlights that design in red, indicating there's a problem. So while we detect there's a problem, and if you don't want to go through this entire queue, I could go ahead and stop this queue. And whatever is the last simulation being performed, it will be performed and then ADS will stop the queue. Now, once we notice there is an error here, I can just click on this icon, open up this schematic and have a look and then correct the problem which I had. But in this case, I deliberately introduced the error. This schematic is not supposed to be simulated. All right, so once we have this queue and we set up this queue again, uh, we can also go ahead and save this uh, queue into a file, which is saved as .queue file, is a simple comma separated you know, value kind of file, and we can even open it in text editor. So let's go ahead and save it. And now we will open um, that queue file and see what kind of text format is that. So let's go to the file system. And in here, we can notice there's a, the queue manager file here. So under the workspace, we will find a queue manager underscore demo dot queue. We can go ahead and open it in notepad. Now this file can also be created by user using some scripting language. If you have a large uh, number of schematics, let's say 50 or 60 to be simulated, and you don't think it's viable for you to go ahead and open those 50, 60 schematics and then add them into Queue Manager, not a problem. You can use any of your scripting languages uh, you have and you can create the simple test page. So basically it's a very simple syntax to follow. You define the workspace name, you define the path to your schematic view, what you are trying to simulate in terms of library, schematic and the view. You define the data set name, you define the data display name, and a couple of other options. Everything separated by a comma, and save it with .q extension. Once you save this file, and once you go back to ADS, and let's say you activate the queue manager, so let me go ahead and delete all the files we have in queue, and here are the icons to do that. I can get rid of everything which I have in the current queue. If I already have a .q file, either created by someone else in ADS or using your scripting language, you can go ahead and open that q file here. And once you open that up, uh, all the test benches will be lined up. So whether you want to use a GUI method or whether you want to use a scripting method to create this .q file, it's all okay with ADS to be, to be used and simulated. All right, so that's the end of this video. Hope you like this new utility and it will be helpful for your design job. Wish you good luck and feel free to contact me if you need any further support on ADS on any related topic. Thanks a lot for your attention.